see my honeybee I went down to the south field Just to see my honeybee yeah. Oh, I ain't seen her in so long Show do miss her company Lightning came so quick, hit my honey bee and fly. Yeah, yeah. I was standing in the south field with my honey bee at my side. It was raining in the south field, but her lips were cold and dry. I'm hearing is the sound of a lonely night. If you're ever in the South Sea, you must stop and think of me. Lord have mercy. If you're ever in the South Sea, just as sad as you can be. Hey. Cause my honey bee is still there She's waiting there for me Our friend Kennard was lucky enough to survive the storm that night. He captured on footage what thousands of others could not, the survival of his home. Mighty Katrina was the single most catastrophic natural disaster in U.S. history. The storm devastated an area roughly the size of Great Britain and forced 270,000 onto the streets. Over 1,300 men, women, and children lost their lives. Life would never be the same. Foundations were shaken and faith was tossed in the wind. Man, it'll be when the water goes down, it'll be about four feet deep. Not to mention all that wood. And how are we gonna get rid of all this stuff? I guess they come by and pick it up in a truck, I guess, huh? I mean, it's all the way out to the road. Poor neighbor next door, man, he... I don't know, eh? I guess he's all done. His house is done. <laughs> Tell me about how early it is and what we're about to do. Uh, it's, it's really early. In my younger years, I would just be going to bed. Instead, I actually slept and got up. And uh, we're packing 46 guys into uh, what appears to be a little trailer worth of stuff and uh, driving 15 hours to New Orleans. Epic adventure starts now. My name is Dan. I'm traveling to Slidell, Louisiana with 44 other men. 
and this is Ginghamsburg Church's 70th trip to the Gulf. God does his best work in cemeteries, I really believe that, so I'm excited to see what kind of opportunity lies in New Orleans. But most importantly, I'm excited to bring back the story. Uh, I want to make a documentary out of this thing or something. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to turn into. I don't even know what stories exist quite yet, but uh, I'm excited about getting something. You've seen the sunrise and the sunset today. This is Pat. Pat's my right hand man. What'd you say? They got rid of all those FEMA trailers there in Mississippi. They're all oh, the out, ones that were on the road. Of them. Yeah. There were thousands, thousands of them. Of them. Yeah. They're like cordwood. They start here and they just that's go. That's I mean, they're parked this close to each other, all the way up this hill. Then there's another road, another road. Yeah. It's like for a half of a mile long. All of them. What are you excited about this week? I have no idea what to expect, man. After a grueling 14-hour drive and a great po' boy seafood dinner, we finally arrived at Aldersgate Church in Slidell, Louisiana, unpacked and closed our eyes in preparation for the days to come. someplace and build a 30-foot handicap ramp. That's what you're doing. That's right. I'm a little intimidated by the math that could be involved in this. Stim could, you know, what is that? I got theorems. Yes. Send somebody into the street. But they get down a lot faster that way. Good to have you. Really good to have you. All right. Well, North Shore Disaster Recovery, which is the original organization that you guys came down here and started to serve almost six years ago, uh, is the long-term recovery organization for this area. Epworth is the faith-based organization that really is fixing the homes for Katrina damage. But we also have other parts of North Shore Disaster Recovery that, that do homeless centers and work in nursing homes and do all kinds of other social related issues. Over the, over the past six years, we've had 79 faith-based partners. Gingensburg by far one of the, the strongest because you guys have brought by far the most teams. I want you to understand this, if you weren't here, they would not get one minute of recovery this week because you're the only group here this week. And so their homes would sit and sit and sit. Of course you can't expect to work a full day without getting a full lunch. Big Dan, what's what happening? Mean, mean power saw. Mean, mean power saw. Mean, mean power saw. Mean, mean power saw. I like it. <laughs> That's what my kids told me. They said, Dad, don't lose any of your fingers. I will. MT. MT. Fill it up. Yeah, you put your family with spring. I'm going to give you a big Ziploc bag so all your lunch is in there. You can dry. It's a big one. We did five houses of drywall last time. Oh, man. We were drywalled out. I'm going to tile this time. I don't want to see no drywall. <laughs> Our first major problem was to solve how to get all of the food to all of the work sites. Luckily for us, Fred knew exactly what to do. The rest of us were not so sure. Wait a minute, you're not old enough to be on this trip. Of course I am. Of course he is. I'm a man. So is Aaron. We're men. All in all, everyone was ramped and ready to go. Excited to get working. We were all having a great time getting to know each other. You could tell that for many of them, this was not their first missional experience. I was surrounded by proudly worn t-shirts. <laughs> Living upstairs, but that's how it is, you know. Damn!
So every this whole area flooded that you see. Every every bit of everything on this side of town flooded. This even when I went to high school on this side of town, that whole school's torn down and rebuilt now, a whole brand new school. Mm. So it looks great now compared to how it did five years ago, you know. That, this is the high water mark. This is the high water mark right here and about four foot, and then as the water receded and set their left marks on the on the door. So it was in here for quite a while. Wow. You see we got a group here. And, and they have the, such a blessing. They have the ability to get it completely sheetrocked, so that's why I had Susan call. So this okay. will work. All right. Thank you, sir. Y'all have a blessed day. Right, I can't too. tell you how much I appreciate it. We've been assigned to uh, this house on Mary Street in Slidell, and we are in charge of insulation and drywall. A previous crew started the drywall, and we're here to finish it out mm -hmm. so that the homeowners who are living here can see that we've actually finished their project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so here we were, neck deep in post-Katrina metropolitan New Orleans. Slidell is in the southeast corner of Louisiana, resting in the fold of Lake Pontchartrain in St. Tammany Parish, just north of the Big Easy. The hurricane hit the city hard, but Slidell has been slowly rebuilding since. And today, 27,000 call Slidell home. Uh, you know, Katrina was an awesome storm, and uh, we living in the part of the, the uh, United States that we live in, we prepare for hurricanes. Uh, uh, we were nowhere, uh, just like nobody, was really prepared for the magnitude of a Katrina. At the police department, I had 112 employees that worked for me. Uh, we, when Katrina passed through, uh, 48 of us had no home to go back to. Uh, the police department had a little better than six foot of water in the police department. Here we are six years later, uh, we're still building and trying to recover from Katrina. And that effort has been ongoing ever since Katrina passed through on, uh, on August 29th of 2005. Uh, everybody has new storm plans now and hopefully uh, prepared for uh, anything near our uh, another Katrina, which I certainly hope I never have to live through in my lifetime again. Woo! That's an older turnboat, I guess. I don't know. Oh, man, look at this one coming. I'm meat, baby. This guy down here. Here it comes. It's in the house. Broke the door lock. Instead of packing 45 guys into one place, we split our group into four teams. Team two was busy insulating when the cameras arrived. Where's hammer time? Oh, 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 oh. Every time you hammer, do the hammer dance. I can't hammer this. I can't hammer this. <laughs> How's everybody doing? How y'all feeling? Lunch times became a welcome moment of rest and a special time of sharing. From the men who had been on trips before, the stories flowed. It had the roof blown off, and so everything had to be stripped down to the studs and replaced on the inside. And they hired a contractor, and the guy came in, and he put a roof on, and he put the ducting, and then took off with the rest of their money. They lost like $45,000. The guy was in his 80s. They were living in the FEMA trailer, and his wife died living in the FEMA trailer. And he was just hoping, he was approaching senility. His daughter and grandson were living with him. And he wouldn't even stay in the trailer at night. He would go over and sleep in the house with no walls, no security. And they would go over and check on him during the night. And then in the morning when he woke up, they'd bring him back over to the trailer. Making a difference in people's lives is about going out and doing this kind of work for people. You know, we talk about hands and feet of Jesus. and. Um, for me, uh, growing up in another church, it was really sort of a stand-up, sit-down routine, and 
I've been a Christian all my life. Um, but it wasn't until last year where I really realized the uh, impact that this kind of outreach makes on people's lives. Yeah, this neighborhood, we are in uh, Pilot, Louisiana. The water was three feet above the peak of the roof in this entire neighborhood was submerged. This was the highest water in Louisiana during the during Katrina. It's like the light pole. It was probably a foot above the height of that light pole's light. That is a lot of water. And so, I mean, is it amazing that these houses are still here? Or is that to be- Well, expected? as we've always seen, the masonry, the, the brick homes stayed. They did not shift off their foundation so they could be saved. But the uh, wood framed wood houses blew off their foundations. And uh, that's the only thing that saved it is a masonry home. Right. And what about inside the brick homes? I mean, everything lost inside? The <clears> everything furniture? inside is completely lost. They have to gut them down to the studs, treat the studs, pull the wiring, the insulation, the plumbing out, and start over just like a new rebuild or a new home. You're, uh, you've been here all day? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Did you meet the, the homeowners? No, they're actually uh, living in Oklahoma. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> she, the, the company she works for let her transfer to Oklahoma. So whenever they get the house done, then she'll be able to move back. Gotcha. Too. The guys are amazing. It's uh, first day in. You can tell they're already really excited about not only the work they're doing, but um, just the community that's forming. I'm awesome. They're uh, really willing and open to connect with each other. Uh, we actually had a, a lady stop by. She saw the church buses and asked if we could come and help her with some issues with her plumbing. So we drove over there and helped her with that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Day one and it's already uh, just electric. So looking forward to the rest of the week. Well, the, the missional church is a community of people, not a building, but a community of people who are committed to journey with Jesus in God's redemptive purpose out into the world. So it's a serving model rather than being served. We're one of, of many in, in the missional uh, movement uh, that understands that when you make a, a commitment to Christ, that you make a commitment to discipleship, and part of the discipleship pro uh, process is, is serving. Every follower of Jesus is a servant. Mission trips, not only do we you know, sometimes make a dent in helping people, New Orleans has been a great example where we've made 70 trips, so we've really been able to help people in significant uh, ways. Uh, but oftentimes we go on a mission trip to really begin to experience the heart of God. And it's experiencing the heart of God on that trip, connecting to the heart of God, that that becomes not just a trip, but a lifestyle. So, you know, the mission trips are really part of the discipleship process. You want Tommy on your team? This is Ramey. This is his second hurricane relief trip with Ginghamsburg. Ramey, are you excited about today? Huh? Are you excited about today? Yeah, I got nothing to do. Nothing to do? No. You'll have something to do, I bet. You know that what? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing yet either. Uh, <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Amy. And uh, this is this is New Orleans. Yeah, lots of people, lots of work. And uh get ready. It's a, it's a big day. And uh, we have a good time. And uh, the people are working so hard. Okay, Tony. You, you love it here? Oh, I love it here. It's so much fun. We're having a, a great time. You're working, you're working so hard? Yeah, I'm working pretty hard, and it's hot out here. It's really hot. Oh, yeah. You like it here? Yes, I do. I like coming down here and helping people out. Um, I, I think today, our, our, this week, our primary goal is, is going to be construction. And uh, we're going to do, yeah, we're going to uh, lock the, all the boards, we're going to do it. When we put all the boards up, yeah. we're going to have a, uh, a ramp for somebody here who's uh, handicapped or blind and in a wheelchair. And uh, it's a great, great thing to be able to uh, do that kind of work, you know, and the opportunity from the church and everything else. 
this is it's awesome to, 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 to do this for other people. It takes us out of sight of us. It really does a great job. So, especially you, Raymond. <laughs> oh, yeah, that did great. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Glad to do it. The people are so hard here, and uh, we have our fun, and uh, get that job done, get, get over with, and uh, starting everything. And uh, this is this is in New Orleans. Monday, baby, and uh, I'm out. How's that look? That look, I think. That's what we were just talking about. It's, it's real. It's good. real. It's, it's a gentle slope. Yeah. What are you doing, man? Regardless of how few of us actually knew what we were doing, we could accomplish more together than any of us could on our own. Hi, my name's Bud. Nice to meet you. I now can't remember your name. No, it's all right. Hi, I'm Dan Turner. I'm Irene Lucas. Nice to meet you. Watch your steps. You hear there's an awful lot on the floor. Hi, I'm Irene Lucas. I'm Sharon's mother. Nice to meet you. Nice to you. meet you. I'm so, I'm so proud and thankful for you all because I prayed for you. Well, thank you very much. I'll pray for you. Thank you. If I get to a quick, you're Hi, how you doing? Are you, are you Sharon? Yes, I, hi. I'm, I'm Dan. I'm the cameraman. So oh, I, get, I haven't gotten hey, to meet you yet. You got my yeah. picture? <laughs> yeah. Hi, how you doing? This is... Oh, Ramey. Yep. Yeah. Ramey's what? been helping Ramey? me. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice name, Ramey. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. Ramey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is Pat. He's been helping me, too. Hi, hi. Yeah. How you I'm going to talk to you on the phone. Yeah, okay. Hi, Pat. My mother brought y'all some satsumas. They're like a uh, tangerine from South Louisiana. Yeah, yeah. Sharon openly shared with us her story of survival. Area flooded within minutes. It just came up. It was over my fence, so it was around four foot. I, the water came up so fast, and I always knew I didn't want to die in an attic or a house, so the doors wouldn't open. So I uh, uh, opened my window and went out the window, but none of the dogs would come out because I thought maybe we could get on the roof because I'd put a ladder out, but I couldn't find the ladder. You found stuff that was in the living room in a bathroom or stuff in the bath. It was just unreal. You found stuff. That's my grandbaby, the love of my life. <laughs> At her house, her house flooded too. Uh, when you walked in, she had this little horse and it was, the speaker was wrong and it was making this little eerie noise by itself. It was really kind of strange. I started to see my fence again within hours, so I knew it was going down. And so we sat on the countertop and um, I stayed the day. I ate cold canned food. Luckily, you know, the food in my pantry, the cans didn't get wet. And there was no electric and it was just kind of, um, it was kind of almost, you felt, felt like you were in a third world. I mean, there was no noise. I remember the next day, uh, the lab had knocked my uh, cell phone in the water and my neighbors came back to get their dog and I went and asked them could I use their cell phone to call work and they said miss there isn't a New Orleans anymore and then all of a sudden you just realize how quiet it was. If I post this on Facebook tonight what do you want to say? <coughs> Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Alright Jesus is Lord on three. One, two, three. Jesus is Lord on three. <laughs> it's, uh, it's day two. Um, are you encountering struggles today that you didn't yesterday? Uh, well, yeah, we're having problems with our power cord. You know, every, it's shorting out, and every time somebody walks by and kicks it, it uh, shorts out, and all the drills lose power. But go back and kick it again, and go back to work. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? I don't know. Drywall, trying to get it lined up, and find the studs in the, the in the wall. You know, it can be uh, difficult. But, oh gosh! But we deal with it. You know, <laughs> move on. What about working with each other? Day two. Uh, uh, day two. Um, no, it's good. Good. We're actually growing. You know, what I'm saying, getting to know each other better and jumping get, around, horsing around. Getting more comfortable. You know what I'm saying, getting more comfortable, relaxed. You know, what I'm saying, it's like, yeah. yeah. As the house is transforming, you're seeing the spirit transform us. Yeah. Awesome. The spirit was also at work among team number three. Eric the second was inspired by stacks of scrap floor tile and began a little project of his own. What are you gonna do with them? 
What I'm gonna do with the crosses is I'm gonna keep some of my souvenirs if I have enough time and enough pieces. I think I might make one for like each person in my van at this work site. I think that'd be pretty cool. You guys make a lot of progress today? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Made, made a lot of good progress. Down. We had to scrape all the floor and put all this down. And we had to figure out these walls. You see this wall? It's like this. We'll do that with our So we flip a chalk line to make sure we have a, a straight starting point. And then, uh, then when you get to the walls, you have to make all special cuts for the, for the tile that go up against the wall. Yeah, got a good brother. Yeah, you're a good brother too. Yeah. And you got a good sister too, don't you? Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I think it takes a community to raise a child, and I think it's like with him. It's I've got this incredible church community. I have been here. Having seen each site, I felt proud of our team's progress. Each crew had a laser focus on the task at hand. Everything was running back, right? real smooth. Yeah. How about that? A check-in with team number one was the last item on the agenda before dinner. How's it going? 48 should... It's going. It's going. It will be a success. We, we darn near got the room done. How's your dad on the way? Pretty well. Pretty well. Oh yeah. Yeah. You uh, are okay. Yeah, so 48. I hate country music. Here. So let me find somebody that's free. So maybe not everything was running smoothly. But for the most part, you could tell that these 45 men had come together with a common purpose. A common passion, a common love. Hi, I'm a fresh shrimp. Just came in there. Eat me. And tonight, that love is jambalaya. There's so many variations of jambalaya, you know, I, mean, I think, I think it originally it was, it was uh, a bunch of leftovers in the refrigerator come together in the Maraqua of the uh, veggies, and then they put rice in it. I want the box of rice. Do I do that. I don't want it all the time. Let's see what I got Imagine what could happen if a group of people get passionate about something that matters. And not just jambalaya, but solving issues like world hunger, battling the curse of poverty, changing the face of your city or neighborhood. Passion is contagious, and it's passion that brought these men to Slidell, Louisiana. A passion to bring God's love, and a passion to bring the city back to life. What do we have to do? We're gonna do some work, Dan. Why are we up so early? <laughs> Nick's making us. <laughs> come down here, and then come back up. Here. Okay? That's dive bomber, right? So we're gonna go from dive bomber to, um, we'll go to what's called a fire hydrant. Through here, feet up off the ground. No, we're not going to hurt him. Hey, Dave having him there. He's coming for the camera. All right. Pull his tail off. Joe wants to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> It'll actually just grow. Try to keep from squeezing. Oh, oh Peter Jennings is so back out. Here. Peter Jennings. He can take him back out. He's your gecko. Joe, you need a napkin or something. How much have you guys got done this week? Uh, we got a pretty good amount done. We uh, still got. Uh, a lot of drywalling, like one, two, three rooms. 
Where are you guys heading? Uh, we are heading back to our job site to uh, do some more drywall. How much you want to get done today? Uh, probably not going to get a lot done today since it's only half day. Hope to get a lot done. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gonna be able to get it all done this week? Oh, we know we will. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. The team, the team that I'm working with, it's a done deal. Where are you guys heading? We're headed out uh, to uh, No Shore Sidell. Yep. And what are you Our gonna be doing? Site. <laughs> what are you gonna be doing today? Finishing the ramp. Building a ramp. Today, the plan is to visit the Ninth Ward in the afternoon. Turn right. Look at this rain. I love it. It's, uh, you don't want it to be pretty and sunny all the time. You got to experience all of it. What do you think of the rain? Right. Take a shower. <laughs> Where's your soap? I have that soap. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, we have, as you can see, finished putting the deck boards on the uh, ramp that we've got, the entrance ramp, and then the ramp up to the door. Uh, today we're going to finish putting the deck boards on and we're going to start with the main handrail. And then we've got to finish putting on uh, kick plates and some other rails and then spindles on the deck itself and then we'll be done. In the rain. In the rain. <laughs> we work no matter what, it's like the U.S. Postal Service. Jim, did you unplug me yes. over there accidentally or on purpose or? What? Did you I unplug me on purpose or accidentally no, over there? <laughs> Got the bad mud sanded flat from the last group that came through because they didn't put any tape on the seams. They just mudded. So we had to sand it back down. That caused us a consternation. And of course the ceiling's not screwed tight enough as you can see it's dropping down. It's not just slapping it up four by four by four. Every time we pick up a sheet we have to do a cutout for a receptacle or a light switch or something. And you know, you're working with folks that want to do the job but I've never done it before. So the dedication is here. It's just the skill level is not as high as it'd be nice. You know, the problem is, is that there isn't another group coming in next week. That's what I was hoping for, is that we finish on Friday, and that Monday they pick up. And so these people see a continuation of getting the project done. The problem is, Kingsburg is the next group coming after Christmas. These people have a building permit on the front window from 2010. They have sat in this unfinished house all through 2011. I don't think we'll make everything on the list by Friday at three. We need about, we need another crew is what we need. Two good drywall guys that can just come in and boom. Did I lose my home? Yes. I had 38 inches of water in my home. So uh, actually I had some employees at the police department who lost, my, my home was rebuildable. You know, my home has been rebuilt. I actually had a couple of employees at the police department whose home sat on Lake Pontchartrain uh, on the water. Uh, their home was totally gone. I mean, they did not recover one photo of their wedding. They did not recover one child's birth certificate. They did not recover one grandparent or mother or father, anything in their home. Their home was just like, it did not exist anymore. It was just like something picked it up and disposed of it. I mean, they saved nothing. Uh, you know, we're, we still have some areas of town that we're dealing with that uh, some people have not decided whether they're gonna come back or not. We still have some homes that we're dealing with that uh, some of them are we're having to mitigate and take down because people just decided I don't want to battle it anymore. Uh, Kenner Jackley. Say again? Kenner Jackley. K E N Kenner. K E N N A R D. J A C K L E Y. Man, you guys are fast. Uh, I mean, it was phenomenal how the faith based groups just arrived way before the federal government ever did. Uh, before FEMA or any other uh, federal recovery efforts uh, showed up on our doorsteps and, you know, set up kitchens and set up uh, supplies, uh, food, clothes, uh, medical help and for people for our city. 
our citizens who needed that help and singling them out and targeting them first has uh, has brought this city back uh, faster than any other city around. And I believe you can look around and see that for yourself. It's, it's visual, it's obvious. It, it, it's just right there just for anybody to look at and see. And uh, it has been because of, of the efforts of the faith-based groups. Your mission? to go to New Orleans and get the best raw footage possible. The task, using the tools that you have available, one van and a team of elite three media specialists. Go to New Orleans. Who are we competing against? The world. And so take on the world we did. We'll win. The Ninth Ward was one of the hardest hit areas of New Orleans. Surprisingly, some people never left. Dave, our team leader, wanted us to meet a couple friends of his, Harris and his wife Consuela. I was leading the trip down here about three years ago and we were uh, down the street a little bit and we saw a house that was actually moved off its foundation. And it was just weird because the house was here and the foundation was over here. This is where the ninth worm took the direct hit. Yes. And uh, as the, as the our missionary guy on the bus took the pictures, I saw Harris and uh, Calvin sit stand on the corner over there, and I thought I'd just get out and engage him and talk to him. <coughs> and uh, you were so gracious, you said to me, well, Dave, just bring your whole group in the house. <laughs> and man, I've been coming back ever since that man. Yeah. So, I'm just saying, you could be in this town any time. When you come here, that door is open. <laughs> you, you don't have to knock, just come on in. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm stumbling for words right now. But you know, when you, when you have love in your heart for people, and when and people like you are of character, when people of character come to your home, it makes you feel so good. And children of God, that's down here, in the, you're on a mission, you know. You're out here, you, you, you know, like to say, uh, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. It look like we have a whole lot of laborers here for God. <laughs> Nothing but laborers here serving the Lord. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? And, and I'm talking about men. Let's finish this prayer. Okay. thousand three thousand uh, people here from different faith-based groups out singling out our people in need and going out and helping them rebuild their homes cut the trees off the top of their homes that they didn't have the money to hire somebody to come in and do uh, gutting their homes and cutting the walls out stripping the carpet off the floor dragging the wet soggy furniture out to the street and by targeting those folks and, and helping those folks out has has you know, was a huge jump start on the recovery of our city. And I cannot, no matter what I say, give those groups enough credit. The truth about the destination is that the joy is in the journey. Jesus came to rebuild, restore, and renew. After a night in New Orleans, it was evident that someone had done some rebuilding. The Big Easy spirit was alive and well, but something tells me it wasn't without a lot of teamwork and new friendships. 
We were all looking forward to those before and after shots of our projects, but it was also important to enjoy the moment before it passed us by. We're at uh, Speckle, Speckle Tees, the best raw oysters in all Louisiana for Wacky Wednesday. Okay, better oyster bait. Dan, Dan Turner is about to try a raw oyster. Here's, here's to hoping that he does not die. <laughs> The most important part of every day on this trip has been the Word of God. Say what you want, but there is no other opportunity on earth better than a mission trip to work with and meet new people. There are no limitations or conditions to who can join a God movement like this. This is trip number seven for Jake. By now he can drill and drywall with his eyes closed. But there's one thing Jake always looks forward to. And aside from his drilling and drywalling skills, it's the same reason all the guys love him. Jake loves to make people laugh. And every trip Jake is on, he prepares a special 30 minute stand-up routine. What, what brings you back here every year? I just come back every year. Well, it's awesome, man. We, we love having you come down every year. You know, every every person brings what? something unique. Every person brings something unique to the group. You got some good jokes for us tonight? I think so. Awesome. Are you going to give us a little preview? You got a good one right now? Well, I heard that there is a uh, three-foot fortune teller that broke out of prison. The police described him as a small medium at large. <laughs> good one. Today is the fourth day. Today is the fourth day. I'm, I'm Raymond Arnold. Raymond Arnold and uh, New Orleans. Hey, hey so brother. Now. Yeah. You, you love your painting? Oh, what? Painting? No, no. Well, well, that's not fun. Yeah. Um, you got a hat? You're silent. No. You're silent good? I got one. I'm bring it with Yes, it is. Is that right? And uh, you like uh, everything you like to do here? 
Uh, yes. <laughs> like uh, painting or siding, everything. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, help it guys out and the people say they like you for well. Um, yes. That's great. Best interview yes. ever. <laughs> Is it good? Good help or? Uh, yes. This was done. I've <laughs> been on a couple mission trips, but I really just wanted to come out. I'm retired now, and I really just needed to do something that would help somebody. And, you know, and part of it is, you know, I'm, you know, I, is really for, you know, my heart myself and and um and you know hopefully will help some people so so i'm really happy to happy to be have the opportunity to be here we dried up pretty easy yeah. all right now we're gonna go up that wonderful ramp and yeah, get it on your own. yeah this is easy now what y'all working on now the rails the rails yep hey dave get that and the deck, the deck portion of it with the spindles and spindles, y'all getting fast. Yeah, right? we're all getting fancy <laughs> on you. <laughs> You're gonna have the nicest deck around. Get that paper. I've been in Slidell for about 11 years now. That's great. Yeah, I uh, originally I'm from from the West Bank, the other side of the river. That's where I was brought up at. What'd you lose your sight again? About three on. years ago. Three right years? Here. Yes, sir. The diabetes took it, right? Yeah. I found out I had glaucoma when I was right 22, the so it lasted 30 something years. Now, some people that get that, they wake up in the morning and <laughs> totally yeah, That's a good idea. Me? Well, that's true. It started with one eye. I had plenty of surgeries and all before. It went totally blind, but they didn't help. It stuck needles in my eye with some cancer fighting drug that was supposed to shrink the vessels and all. None of that worked. I never really went to church that much, but God's always been on my side. He's been there for me every bit of the way. I guess that's why I never really did too many bad things. I never smoked, never drank. I never did any drug in my life. Uh, I always did help people. My dad was that way too, help people all the time. Somebody needed something done or something, you know, you help. And that's just the way we always did live. You don't have that much anymore, you know, where, where people help each other and all. It's just, it's just people don't do that anymore. Well, it's going to be eight. Well. Gotta show you this. You never expected to see it. Big old sailboat right in the middle of the car. Well, he's off the road. That's a good thing. That's the one that was over yonder here. Now, there's North Shore Volunteer Fire Station. I left the I left some dog food for that dog. I don't know if he'll find it or not. Well, good luck, everybody. I think I got a crack rib, I ain't sure. Whew, can't hardly breathe anymore. After 70 trips, it's hard to stay invisible. The Times Picune took notice of our presence and sent a reporter to take some photos. I do. I've seen lots and lots of groups there that are godsend. They, they, uh, I've been coming since the storm and they haven't stopped. Uh, pretty much everybody else has forgotten about us, but they haven't. Uh, most of the church groups have not. So, so in, in that general scheme, is uh, a team coming down 70 times, is that uh, newsworthy? Yes, indeed it is. Around here? Yeah, you betcha. It'd be nice if it was a right-handed saw. I'm used to running the right-handed. But you take what you get. You know, I was an atheist at one point, so um, this is very different doing something, you know, 
with a church group and running around and praying every day. And but it's awesome. You know, the whole experience is just great. Eric the first thought it was important to bring his son. My wife and I both agreed that it was it was really important for him to um, to have ex you know experience other men that are they're godly men and um, you know if, if all he if all he hears is mom or dad saying the things that he should do and the things that he shouldn't do and the things that he should be thinking about then um, it gets kind of old but I feel really safe with him in this group and I know that. Whichever group of guys he's running with, whichever team he's with, and whichever guys he's working with, um, he's hearing the things he should be hearing, and he's getting the influences that he should be getting, and that's that's really important to me. It's hard to understand why, six years after the fact, homes are still not rebuilt. But we don't have to understand. As long as there's rebuilding to do, we'll keep doing it, trip after trip, year after year, one home at a time. And the more we worked, the more the spirit worked, and the more our lives began to change. No, this I was baptized as an infant. Uh, I was sprinkled in a Lutheran church uh, with uh, several sponsors who were wonderful to me in my life. And uh, this trip has been really special for me, and it was last year as well, coming down here and doing this mission work, and it really um, sort of reaffirmed why we're doing this. And I just thought last year that I'd like to reaffirm my baptismal vows, and there was no place better to do it, and no better people to do it with than uh, this group of guys that uh, we're with here. Uh, so for me, it's, uh, it's a focus and a, a, a commitment uh, to, to, to Jesus. Most mission trips have a magical moment. It's usually the last night you're there when you have a moment to reflect on what you've just done and reflect on the world you're about to re-enter the next day. You can't help but to look at life differently. That magic moment for us came by the end of day four. Pat and I were politely asked to turn off the cameras. So we just had ourselves a little adventure. We wanted to go downtown to get a nice time-lapse shot of the skyline. We found a spot, I climbed up on top of the van, and then the cops came and told us we were in somebody's property. And not only that, but that we were in the president's reserved spot of some fancy schmancy art school <laughs> and uh, made me get down off of the van. They said that the, the cop told us that anything weird they called, he says, and they called and said there's a guy climbing on top of a van <laughs> with a camera. They thought, oh, that's pretty weird. <laughs> so. Spaghetti for dinner. Hopefully yeah. we can make it. We can make it. You think we'll make it? We make it. We'll make it. Ramy says we'll make it. Yeah. Now what are we doing here? Dan. Uh, uh oh. There you go. Tell me your uh, number one reflection. What are you bringing home with you? My number one reflection. Take home. Yeah. I've been convicted of three things. I, I heard God speak to me very clearly on day one of the trip. God put three different people in my life that correlate exactly with things that I was praying about on before the trip. And so I, I'm convinced, God, you got me. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to try. Bill! What's going on, Dan? What's your, what's your big takeaway? Uh, I think the camaraderie with all the new guys I've met and stuff, uh, brotherly love we have. We still got a lot to do tonight, too. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot ahead. You still got a lot to do tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, we're only working a half day tomorrow, so. We still have like about. 14 hours to drive home. Yeah, we get a lot of sleeping done then. Uh, Catch up on our sleeping then. <laughs> Nobody's gonna interview me. Here, Raymond, you can interview me. Okay, okay. Okay, but uh, they turn it around. Oh, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> You see me? Wait a minute. Say hi, Mom. Hi, Bo Dave. Hey, Ramey. How are you doing? Hey. All right.
gonna ask, ask him questions. some questions. Yes. Yeah. Ask him a tough question, right? Tough question. Okay, uh, he had a good time? Yes. He's like, uh, you silly? Say it one more time. Silly. Silly? Do yeah. something silly? No, 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 no. We were in the city. Oh, we were in the city. Yeah. We were in the city. And then remember when Pat almost ran the stop sign and we almost flew through the windshield? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Uh, that's really great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. What my takeaway is? What's the big thing you're taking home? The biggest thing I'm taking home is these, just watching these people, their faith, their love. Even after five, six years, their stuff isn't redone, and, and everybody's dumped on them. But they still love God, and uh, they trust God for everything. And uh, it's amazing. My takeaway is it's time for all the men in the church to man up and start serving. It was great. I mean, it, come together with a bunch of guys and... Bunch of new friends, new stories. Some you'll take with you the uh, rest of your life. My very first trip down was uh, six years ago, and I didn't know anybody on a trip. Came back with 19 new friends. So every trip I go on, uh, it's, it's all great. It's my detox, is what I call it. The fact that I've found a group of fully dedicated guys that actually come together with limited job skills but a massive desire to finish a project for somebody that we don't even know. Well said, Dave. Right, quick, before I run out of batteries, okay. what's your big takeaway after this week? Um, fellowship with the, the brothers, just the opportunity to spend time with men. Um, I don't get that opportunity often and to see all these, these men serving God with their whole hearts. The love of Christ has been awesome. Well, I was baptized about maybe three or four years ago. I hardly remember much of what happened. I know if I do it here, I'll actually be able to remember most of what happened. And so I thought I'd do it here. I want to do this because it uh, reaffirms that, you know, I have a personal relationship with God um, that's, that's bigger than me. I need to keep my head away from um, interfering with my heart and, and my heart says that God is with me you know and I, I just uh, I look for this baptism to reaffirm that well um, when I was a baby I got baptized and um, it wasn't really a conscious decision of mine you know I, I was a baby and so that was the only time I ever got baptized and um, I wanted to you know make the con conscious decision to do it you know each one of my brothers here has actually helped me out a real a lot. I love you guys. We love you too. You brought me here, and you hold me accountable, and I know I need that. But I just want to further my walk with God, further my relationship. Our witness uh, to others, and to this community, and to our community at home, and other places that we go to. Is, is about us, the, the doing, and that, that, that doing, the things that we're doing now, for example, get people interested. Dreams for today is I want to get arrested on camera. No, I'm and maybe get tasered too. I fit the part. You want to be tasered? I want to be tasered. You want to be tasered? Yes. Eric. I want to be tasered. Well, what are you going to do to get arrested? What do you. <laughs> I don't know. He's going to mug me. Graffiti something? You what, have... Do you have spray paint? Do you have like washable spray paint? It could be like, look like we're graffitiing something. What is this? Glass chalk? Okay. It's like you go up to some shop and like write obscenities on their windows. <laughs> See if I get arrested. You were just baptized last night. <laughs>
And just as with Eric, transformation is a process. But with a long focused pursuit, it's amazing what goals you can reach. Tiling an entire house in four and a half days is no easy undertaking. Neither is discovering that the team before you forgot to tape all the drywall and fixing their mistakes with an attitude of joy. And now Malvin has the best looking ramp in all of Slidell. Handrails and all. Let's be honest, our main pursuit is not to serve Malvin or Sharon or Mayor Drennan in the city of Slidell. No, our main pursuit is to serve Jesus and serving everyone else is a byproduct of that. Thank you. I had six foot, uh, two brothers, but not six foot seven. Thank you. Do you know, we all have to crawl out of holes sometimes and I don't feel like I'm, uh, I feel like I'm peeking out. You know, I feel like I'm peeking out a little bit. You can lose faith in people. And this, this is renewing it for me. Maybe one day I can go on a trip like this. Because, I mean, it's kind of opened my eyes of what's out there, that there's actually people who go out there and do this. And if we all treated everyone like that, maybe this would be a better place. What'd you think of it? Amazing. All done? Yeah. Ready to go and see my wife. There's an end in sight to the actual disaster response type work, but there's not an end in sight in, in the social related issues. This is a lot of the areas we work in have been impoverished for a year for a long time before Katrina. Uh, if we don't empower individuals, then society's not going to be, be changed. And it's back to the old saying is that you can give a person a fish or you can teach people how to fish. And uh, we want to teach individuals, empower individuals, you know, to really uh, move into or grow into everything that God has created them to be. Tell me your thoughts on the missional church. The what? The missional church. It's good. Oh wait, that's the man I want to talk to. Quick thoughts on the uh, missional church. It's awesome. It's pretty quick. Give me a uh, closing line for the entire documentary. It was a great trip. We enjoyed it, and we're going home. I remember my first time boxing. Can't remember anything after that. <laughs> what do you call a guy with two coconuts in his arms? A double headlock. <laughs> what do you call a banana and a slipper? <laughs>
What's the first thing you're gonna do when you get home? Sleep. Sleep? Absolutely. All day? You're, you're not in your head yet. <laughs> oh yeah, you know it. Sleep. I think it's one of the best. I think it is the best. I would have put it at as number one trip that I've ever been on. And, and I, I, I got. And how many trips is that total? Uh, counting Haiti, it's about 12. <laughs> We're friends. Don't mess with us. And we'll come after you. Right? Tell them. So we'll come after you. Everybody, everybody like, like Nick. <laughs> There's a lot happening at Amesburg Church. There's a lot happening in the United Methodist Church. There's a lot happening in the Universal Church. In the Church of America. Church in the world. There's a lot happening in the church right now. By golly, the church is not dying. If anything, guys, just getting ready for a new movement of the spirit. I interviewed my mayo. Thank you for coming over and interviewing me, Ramey. I appreciate it. Thank you so very, very much for coming and helping out in our city. We appreciate you so much, and we appreciate your group that you represent that's here helping our, our citizens. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you. What's the one thing that you're taking back with you? Did I already ask you that? I don't think no. Yeah. What do you guess was the one thing I was looking forward to coming down? And I had no idea. And I, I mean, there's just so much more than one thing I'm taking back with me. Uh, the fellowship was great. The God bonus were almost constant. Are they going to be in here or what? No, I'm uh, It was... Uh, so much more than just the work that you do. It's, it's the fellowship together. It's the being with guys, the, the laughing. You're exhausted, but man, it feels good. It feels real good.